Hey guys, welcome to New Master at the Riff. In this lesson, I'm going to tackle a bit of classic Lynch uh, from the Lynch Mob album, opening track, Wicked Sensation. Classic uh, riff, this. Now, like a lot of George Lynch stuff, I'm half stepped down here. So E flat there, A flat, D flat, G flat, B flat, E flat. Now this riff is all based around pretty much a little um, idea in C-sharp minor. Okay, and what it's doing is a typical little Lynch thing where we're kind of playing a power chord and then we're moving this note down through that chord. So you get that little diminished fifth thing that George Lynch loves and then it's like... Kind of thing. So the the notes are kind of going to do six, five, four, two on the D string. That's kind of what you're doing with a C sharp kind of pedal note or bass note going on. But the first bar sounds like this. Okay. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to play that C sharp power chord. Some first uh, fingers at the fourth fret of the A string. Now I use my fourth finger here, the sixth fret. I noticed George Lynch does that as well, actually. And that just helps for setting up the next um, kind of finger, I think. So basically that's how, that's how I play my C sharp power chord. So I play that. And then what I'm going to do is basically do uh, two palm mutes in that fourth fret A string. Now, you could do all this with downstrokes. But there's actually a slight swung feel to this. That's me exaggerating a little bit. But there's a slight kind of groove to it. So I think... Personally, I find it a little bit easier if I'm doing like down, down, up. Yeah. So basically, we do that. Do the palm mutes. Then I'm going to move that note down in the D string. So I'm now playing fifth fret the D string, but I'm still playing fourth fret that A string. Yeah. Palm mute. Then I'm going to end by barring the fourth fret the A and D strings with the first finger. Now I'm going to split that up there because what we then do is then we do a position shift to play that. So the next notes are actually these same notes, it's just we're going to play it in a different way. And what we have before then as well, just to keep the rhythm going, is a little palm mute and open A string. Don't think about explicitly playing it, if that makes sense. Just think of the, keeping the groove going and think of playing this bit. Okay, and what I'm doing here is I'm, I use my third and fourth finger to play the fourth fret of the A and D strings there. Notice George Lynch uses second and third. I find that stretch is a little bit awkward. Um, so I'm doing basically third and fourth finger, fourth fret of the A and D strings, and then I'm going to play second fret of the D string with the first finger. Keep the third finger where it is. So it kind of goes. And this note that you play here, is, it's got a little kind of punch, a little staccato feel to it. So it kind of goes. that and notice I'm kind of doing that about upstrokes as well to keep the kind of rhythmical groove going okay and you can hear that is just in there yeah. so that's pretty much the first bar we can think of these this riff as being kind of little pairs of two bars that's always going to be your first bar basically okay all the time Second bar, we have this. Actually, before we play the second bar, we've got these open A strings. But again, that's the kind of rhythm, so you just kind of do an upstroke to get into this power chord again. But we go back up to the C sharp uh, minor part, uh, C sharp power chord. And this is your second bar. So we come down the same. And this is where we change. When we get to this barring at the first finger on the 4th fret here. What I'm going to do is hammer 4 to 5 uh, back to 4 on the D string with the 1st and 2nd finger. And then what I do is I play that bass note, that C sharp 4th fret A string again with a palm mute. Like that. Yeah. 
And then what we have is a quick position shift to second fret of that D string there. And what I'm doing is I'm playing a pinch harmonic. It's a bit there. It's kind of a note running with that C sharp. You know, obviously it's kind of root note of the, the, the kind of key of the tune. And it's two, they're kind of semi pinch harmonics because you can hear the kind of this note a little bit. But you dig in. I would use two down strokes for that as well. Second pick stroke, you put plenty of vibrato on that harmonic. Okay, so that bar slowly goes. Yeah. Bar three is the same as bar one, so we've got our. Yeah. And then bar four goes. So what we do is we sit in that little diminished shape a little bit longer. Give a little vibrato and then slide up the neck and play this. Okay. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to be playing a little um, kind of chromatic idea. I'm doing 0, 2, 3, 4 in the E string. Probably a little bit of slight pan mute to control it there. Then I play 2nd fret of the A string, then open E string. So it's kind of a little lead in to get back to that. Notice the rhythm of that though. It has that groove to it, it's not, you know, nice and straight, it's got a slight kind of swing to it. Okay, so bar five is basically the same as bar one again. Uh, bar six. So this is where we had our pinch harmonics before. What we do now, so I still have my little but then I go to second fret of the D string without the pinch harmonic, and then as I lead into the next um, iteration of the C sharp power chord, I'm kind of doing a little two, three, four lead into that fourth fret. So the way to think about this is you're playing two, and then two, two in the D string, two in the A string, and then think two, three, and then beat one of the next bar. If that makes sense, rhythmically you might find that second fret of the A string start with an upstroke, so you end up with a downstroke when you get to the fourth fret. So slowly that bar goes, and that's me into the next bar, which of course is the same as bars one and three. And then the last bar is into this. So it's just like we did before, but instead of sliding up the neck, we just sit in that little diminished thing for a beat. And then the vocals start there. Okay. So it's one of these riffs. Is, I mean, the, the recording actually has two guitar tracks. When I did the demo version of it there, I did the same. I recorded two tracks. So there's little variations going on. You might, this like, this little lead in that you hear only occurs in the, I think it's like the left channel, you don't hear the other guitar doing it, so there's all these little kind of things that are slightly different between the two guitar tracks, it gives it the whole kind of vibe. But that I think is a good uh, way of playing it if you're just kind of playing it on one guitar. So it's an awesome riff and it's just one of these classic Lynch things. He loves that. He you know, loves that kind of flat five evil kind of sound. So have fun with it, as usual. If you want to keep uh, up to date, uh, get notified when there's uh, new lessons and stuff built up or gear demos, please subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell as well. Uh, you can check out uh, Master the Guitar on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook, all those usual places too. And I have a Patreon page as well. Um, if you want the Helix patch for the tone I created uh, for this, or how I actually created it, how I matched the tone uh, with the album, you can uh, become a Patreon and get access to the Helix patch. You also get the Guitar Pro version of the tab as well if you want to play it and slow it down and loop it, all those sort of things. And you get lesson requests and of course a lot of additional materials as well for the gear demos, backing tracks, loops, all the type of stuff. If you're interested in that, you can go and check out uh, the Massive Guitar Patreon page. So thanks for watching. Have fun with that riff. It's a classic bit of Lynch uh, and I'll hopefully see you soon.